Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video, we'll learn the basics of friction and its two types, static and kinetic friction. So, up till now we've seen that two bodies in contact experience something called a normal contact force. And it is perpendicular to the surface. There's another kind of contact force called frictional contact force or friction. And it is parallel to the surface. And from your daily life, you probably have heard the term friction before. It's when you have rough surfaces coming in contact and sliding against each other. So, there's a body of mass 10 kg. If it's moving forward with a speed of 20 meters per second, but the surface is rough, then we know that the speed will continuously decrease, right? It's not going to go on forever and it's going to decelerate and eventually stop. The force responsible for this stopping of the object eventually is called friction. And we know that if an object is moving in this direction and its speed goes from 20 meters per second to zero, that means there must be an acceleration in this direction. That means there must be a force in this direction. So we see that this frictional force is actually parallel to the surface. The normal contact force is in this direction. This is the direction of the surface. So the normal contact force is perpendicular to the surface and the frictional contact force is parallel to the surface. Now, this, is, this gives us the direction of friction. The magnitude of friction is slightly tricky and there are two separate types of friction which we'll talk about, starting in kinetic friction. For the sake of simplicity, let's talk about kinetic friction first. Kinetic friction occurs when bodies are slipping against each other. Such as the case we just saw a body moving with 20 meters per second. In this case, the magnitude of kinetic friction is mu n where n is the normal contact force between the two objects. In this case, we know that the normal contact force is 100 because 10 is the mass. So a force of 100 Newton will be acting downwards, which will be the force of gravity. And that will be balanced by the normal force, which will be 100 Newtons. Mu is called, and I'll write mu k in this case because it's kinetic. So mu k is called the coefficient of kinetic friction. And it is just a measure of the strength of friction between the two surfaces. It is a dimensionless quantity because we know the dimensions of force and of the normal force are the same. And its value is generally between 0 and 4 and 5 or something like that. If the value is 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, the surfaces are quite smooth. If the value goes up to 0 0.9, 1, 1 1.2, then the surfaces tend to be quite rough. And the higher the mu is, the rougher the bodies are, the rougher the surfaces are, I'm sorry, and more will be the frictional force. So let's take an example of this. Let's say there's a surface and an object of mass 10 kgs and the surface is rough and the coefficient of the coefficient of friction mu is generally given between two surfaces. So in this case between the surface of the block and the surface of the ground, it is given as 0.4. And I'm applying a force of 100 Newton. Right. So, let's draw the free body diagram. There's a force of 100 Newton acting downwards. There's a normal force acting upward. There's a force of 100 Newton acting in this direction. And there's a force of friction acting in this direction and the acceleration would be A towards the right. Now the normal force equals 100, we know that because the acceleration does not have a vertical component. And since mu is 0.4 and normal force is 100, F is equal to mu n. 
which is 40 right so the net acceleration would be 100 minus 40 is equal to 10 a which gives me a equals 6 meters per second right so and if there was no friction then a hundred newton force would give me an acceleration of 10 meters per second square but friction reduces that to 6 meters per second square right of course if I stop applying the force and the object is still moving then it will have a deceleration and it will eventually stop now let's take a slightly more complicated case in which we do apply a force of a hundred newtons but we apply it at an angle of 37 degrees right so now the free body diagram becomes remember the sine and cos of 37 degrees those are important value 100 Newton acting downwards normal force acting upwards 100 at 37 which gives me components 80 and 60 and friction now an important point in this case the normal was 100 because the vertical direction has no acceleration and there is no other force acting but in this case this 100 newton force has a component in the vertical direction which is 60 so in the vertical direction the equation will be n plus 60 minus 100 equals 0 which gives me n equals 40 right so the normal force is 40 which gives me friction equals 0.4 times 40 that is 16 newtons right so the net horizontal equation would be 83 minus 16 equals 10 a which gives me a equals 6.4 meters per second right now notice that with the same force of 100 newtons earlier we got an acceleration of 6 meters per second square now we get an acceleration of 6.4 meters per second square now that's quite interesting because what we've done is even though we've changed the direction we've introduced a vertical component which reduces the normal force right you could have thought that the acceleration should be more than 6 because instead of a horizontal 100 newton force now I'm applying a horizontal 80 newtons force well that's true but the friction has decreased even more because since a vertical force of 60 newton is introduced the normal is now 40 newtons and the maximum value of friction is 16 newtons right so this is kinetic friction by the way let me just tell you a little bit of terminology here which might be asked in exams n is the normal force f is the frictional force in this case i'm assuming the object is moving towards right right the direction of friction is to oppose motion between the surfaces right the resultant of these two is called the net contact force of course it has a magnitude of root of f square plus n square and the angle which it makes with the normal is called alpha which is called the angle of contact so the angle of contact and the contact force can both be found out if we know the normal force and the frictional force right now let's talk a little bit about the direction of frictional force so let's say this object is moving towards the right in that case the frictional force would be move, would be towards the left right if this object is moving towards the right let's say at 10 meters per second then the friction would be towards the left so we can say that we can say <coughs> we can say that the friction will be towards the left that is the friction will oppose the motion so we might say that a general rule of thumb is that the friction will be opposite to the velocity but let's look at another case let's say this small block is kept on top of a bigger block and somehow we won't go into the dynamics but the bigger block is moving at a speed of 20 meters per second so the bigger block is moving with the speed of 20 meters per second but the smaller block which is on top of it is moving with the speed of 10 meters per second so the smaller block will lag behind the bigger block in fact if I'm standing on the bigger block I'll see it going back with a speed of 10 meters per second this would be relative to the bigger block and in this case we find experimentally that the friction is towards the right 
So even though the motion in this case of the block with respect to the ground is towards the right, the friction is also towards the right. The, the friction hence is not always opposite to the velocity of the block relative to the ground, ground frame. It is the direction opposite to the direction of relative motion between the surface. So, between the two surfaces, relatively, this is going backwards compared to this. So, the friction will be forwards, right? So, the friction direction is not determined from the ground frame. It is determined from the frame of the surface, which is applying the friction on the body. Right? So, this is an important point. Now, let's move on to our second type of friction. This was kinetic friction. And kinetic friction applies whenever there is actual slipping between the two bodies. But what if there is no slipping? So... Let's say I have a ground which has mu equal to 0 0.5. And let's say I have an object of 10 kg. So normal force is 100. I'll just draw a mini free body diagram here. So N will be equal to 100. So F will be equal to 50. But in which direction will the friction apply? Since the body is not moving, we can't find out the direction opposite to that. Actually, the answer is the friction will be zero in this case because think of it this way if friction was towards the left the body would start moving towards the left and friction would be towards the right which is a contradiction if friction was towards the right since it's the only force acting the body would move towards the right and friction would be towards the left again a contradiction right so actually in this case there would be no friction acting and the force of friction would be zero now what if i apply a force of 10 newtons in the horizontal direction in that case, the friction would be 10 newtons, but towards the left, right? It would oppose the tendency to slip. In other words, if there was no friction, the object would move towards the right relative to the surface. So the friction is towards the left, right? And still there is no slipping. Still the acceleration is zero. As I increase the value of my force, the friction keeps on increasing. If I apply a force of 30 newtons, friction will oppose that and it will be 30 newtons towards the left. If I apply a force of 50 newtons, capital F is my force, friction will be 50 towards the left, and there will still be no motion. What if I apply a force of 100 newtons? Well, in that case, friction would be 50 newtons towards the left, and I would have a net force of 50 newtons towards the right, which would give me an acceleration of 5 meters per second towards, 5 meters per second square. So, static friction is friction when there is no slipping, such as these five cases. And it has a direction opposite to relative slipping if there was no friction. Right, so that's easy enough to understand. If I apply a small force on a body and it doesn't move, the direction of friction is opposite to the direction in which it would have moved if there was no friction. The magnitude is slightly trickier. And the magnitude is less than or equal to F max, which is mu n. So, for kinetic friction, the frictional force will always be mu n no matter what. But for static friction, the friction can be anything between 0 and its maximum possible value, which is mu n, which in this case is 50 newtons. Right? So, static friction is self-adjustable. Right? So, we don't really know the value of static friction going into the problem. We do know the value of kinetic friction. If there is a slipping, the kinetic friction will be mu n. Right? And in this case, mu is called the coefficient of static friction. <laughs> right. And in general, it's experimentally observed that mu s is generally slightly greater than mu k. So if the mu k is around 0.3, mu s will be slightly around 0.4. Right. But that's not a given. So these are the two types of friction we saw. I'll repeat. Kinetic friction occurs whenever there is slipping between the objects and its value is equal to mu kinetic times n. 
The static friction occurs when there is no slipping between the objects and its direction is opposite to the direction of motion. If there was no friction and its magnitude can have a maximum possible value of mu n, it cannot go more than that. But remember, friction cannot cause relative motion. Right, friction always opposes relative motion. It can cause actual motion as we saw, but it can never cause relative motion. So its maximum value would be that, that would be mu n. And if a value smaller than that can stop any relative motion from happening, then it would keep that smaller value. Right. A final piece of terminology, just like sometimes we say a light string to imply that the mass of the string is zero, if you ever seen a question it said that a smooth surface smooth surface means frictional coefficient is zero a rough surface means frictional coefficient exists and if the surface is smooth that means it has no frictional coefficient right so we saw a lot of examples last time involving laws of motion in any of those examples i could sprinkle a little bit of friction on top and say this surface instead of being smooth has a frictional coefficient of 0.2 and all you have to do is do verify the algorithm you just choose the system, you just include the FBDs, you just write all the forces, you choose directions and you solve. But in the forces, you will have to add the frictional forces. Right? In the next class, we'll see, we've seen the kinematics of circular motion. And in the next class, we'll see the dynamics of circular motion. That is the forces which actually cause circular motion. Thank you.